We follow this path for a while. Nice view of the river. Yeah. That was some kind of lucky. Guess that one was all full of gecko, eh? <laughs> Don't get used to it, though. Yaoguai are plenty mean as a rule. You can take the path north here if you want. Or head east over the ridge. There's a nice view from the top of that cliff, if you want to look. Nearly there. You see the dead sentries? Souls are trapped in them. Those handprints, dead horses and sorrows mark them on taboo places. Places from back when. Good thing for you, I don't buy into that stuff. Like the shadow of a ghost. against other tribes. Nearly there now. Watch out for traps in the water. Got to keep the white legs out <coughs> somehow, eh?
Here we are. Joshua's just ahead there, through the Angel Cave. Hoi, Auslander Zuka Joshua Graham. You know our tongue. Smart, Auslander. Joshua in high place of Cain. You show respect, Utman. Joshua is greatest warrior. You show him no respect. He show you thunder and fire. Ha, ha. Funny, Auslander. Maybe soon dead, Auslander. Good. We should have given you a better welcome on your first visit to Zion. But from what I hear, the White Legs beat us to it. White Legs seem to be the only visitors we have these days. And I wouldn't have expected anyone from the Mojave to come looking for us. And you're a courier, no less. Not the one I was expecting, but I suppose he wouldn't have come with a caravan. I don't know if you were close to the other members of your group, but you have my sympathy. I pray for the safety of all good people who come to Zion, even Gentiles. But we can't expect God to do all the work. The dead horses are capable scouts. Nothing passes into or out of Zion without my hearing of it. Happy trails. I remember. They were good friends. I have bad news for your employers. New Canaan was destroyed, its citizens scattered. All because of the White Legs. And Caesar, of course. The White Legs want to join the Legion. Caesar's rite of passage is the destruction of the New Canaanites. Almost assuredly because of me. The good news is that we can help you find your way back. Daniel, one of the other New Canaanites, has made many maps of the region. The bad news is that we can't help you right now. Not with everything that's going on. You're a good neighbor to us. We all go through periods of darkness. In such times, we can turn to the Lord. But it's good to have friends. Daniel and I need pre-war tools to help us navigate beyond Zion. Should we need to evacuate, these instruments will be vital to us. Normally, we would have some of the dead horses or sorrows look for them. But many pre-war buildings in the valley are taboo. They won't go inside. Thank you. Follows Chalk can help you find your way around the valley. He's inexperienced. But he knows enough of our language to ignore the taboos about pre-war buildings. Welcome back. What can I do for you? Caesar would never admit this openly, but he knows that I'm alive. I've killed enough of his frumentarii and assassins that have come looking. I've heard one of them travels the Mojave as a courier. Most of Caesar's agents meet a fitting end in NCR territory. 
But maybe this one survived. I think that would put him and you in a difficult position. Caesar has agents looking for me, but he won't admit I'm alive. And even if you killed me, he can't acknowledge that. To do so would be to admit I had never died, that Caesar made a mistake. No, he lives by his lies and shall die by his lies. There is no escaping it. I am a new Canaanite. We believe we are the heirs of a spiritual tradition given to our ancestors thousands of years ago. We have made and kept covenants with our Lord God to honor his laws. In exchange, we are promised eternal salvation after this life. A day will come when our Lord returns to judge us all. Until then, we must honor his laws and start others along the path of salvation if we can. That's why we trade with others and work the tribes. We have more than food and medicine to offer. Good news is our most valuable commodity. In a world filled with misery and uncertainty, it is a great comfort to know that, in the end, there is light in the darkness. Every day we move closer to our judgment. We must do our best to walk in the footsteps of our Lord and teach others how to do the same. For many of us, the road is a difficult one, but the path is always there for us to follow, no matter how many times we may fall. Every day, some days are harder than others. In the Great Basin and Colorado Plateau, all tribes are known for a specific weapon. White legs are known for their big submachine guns, storm drums. They broke into an armory near Spanish Fork and have been using them for years. Of course, the dead horses have their wooden war clubs, and even the Sorrows have their Yao Guai gauntlets. This type of 45 automatic pistol was designed by one of my tribe almost 400 years ago. Learning its use is a new Canaanite rite of passage. I wouldn't say that. I am the acting war chief for the Dead Horses. They look up to me for such matters, but I only have the authority they give me. Daniel is the spiritual leader and main link of the new Canaanites to the Sorrows. He's up in the Narrows right now. A great deal. There are three, make that four, tribes here in Zion. You've already met the White Legs on the way in. In this camp, you'll find dead horses. In the Narrows, the Sorrows. And finally, there's Daniel and myself. We're new Canaanites. They attack everyone who isn't a white leg, especially caravans. They don't know how to survive on their own, so they have to raid. But as for why they are here, they are trying to wipe us out, all of us. They want to join Caesar's legion, and they can only prove their worth by destroying the new Canaanites and everyone we shelter. Most don't. It's been hundreds of years since the war. They've developed their own languages. Take the dead horses. We think they were originally refugees from a place called Rez, east of the Grand Canyon. They speak a combination of Rez and a language spoken by travelers who were visiting Rez when the bombs fell. Over time, the two languages blended. I was a translator years ago, but it's hard to keep up with all of the tribal variations. The valley belongs to God, but no. The dead horses live at Dead Horse Point, up the Colorado River. They came here because I asked them to. Before I returned to the fold, I visited them years earlier. I looked much different then, but I left an impression on them. I taught them how to hunt more efficiently, how to maintain their weapons and pre-war equipment. When I returned, they showed their appreciation. 
The Saros have many skilled hunters among them, but no warriors. They have not had to deal with war or raiders for decades. Even though they can hunt a full-grown Yaogwai, they don't know how to deal with the White Legs. That's why we're here. We wear more clothing than them and understand more about technology. But we're still a tribe, a linked family of families. The Boneyard, Phoenix, New Vegas, they're just places, metal and stone. New Canaan dies, but the tribe lives on. When the walls come tumbling down and you lose everything you have, you always have family. And your family always has tribe. We do. Though the White Legs destroyed New Canaan, they didn't destroy all of our supply caches. All forms of currency are recognized here. Caps, NCR dollars, even Legion coin. Take a look. Let me have a look. My tribe may take too much pride in its mechanical talents, but in truth, we are intrigued by the workings of a fine firearm. Right now, I'd like you to focus on helping Daniel. Maybe there will be time later. God be with you.
Bet they don't have anything as nasty as Yao Guai out where you come from, huh? Bet they don't have anything as nasty as Yao Guai out where you come from.
nasty as Yao Guai. For as long as I remember, the dead horses have thought the places of the old world were taboo. Doesn't look so spooky to me. I hear some odd things about the civilized lands outside Zion. Is there really a Good. giant thunder lizard people live inside? What can I tell you? Mostly it's the mountain bighorners. Whole herd of them up on the cliffs there. Usually they're not too aggressive, but lately... My guess is one of the calves got lost somewhere along the way. 
Bighorners are communal. One missing calf, and the whole herd gets ornery. If that calf doesn't turn up soon, they might very well come down into the valley and attack the camp. Yeah? Hey, thanks. Most of the hunters don't listen when I tell them the problem. Just one thing. Try not to kill any bighorners if you can, yeah? You'll drive the herd off and we'll have to range farther on our hunts. Hmm. You might try luring the baby out with some banana yucca. These bighorners go crazy for the stuff. That's great. I'll help any way I can.
feels good to be doing some actual scouting, not just following. Here's some odd things about the civilized lands outside Zion. Is there really a giant thunder lizard people live inside? Feels good to be doing some actual scouting.
like the shadow of a ghost. Compass thing always knows where north is, huh? Even if it can't see the stars? I hear some odd things about the civilized lands outside Zion. What can I tell you? Let me tell you a story. When I was a boy, a man came through the valley with one of the caravans. Tall man, big mustache, carried a guitar. I asked what he did for his living, and the interpreter told me he was a singer. What is that? I asked. The man explained that he went from place to place and sang for people, who gave him food and shelter and care in return. I couldn't believe that there was a place in this world where a man could do that. I promised myself then that one day I'd explore that world myself. I, um, I haven't told him yet. Never had the Gwawans. You'd do that? Sure. Sounds smart to me. 
He might not get so mad at you. White legs. Nasty bunch. They've been raiding deeper into Zion ever since New Canaan was wiped out. That's the weird part. Normally, the White Legs keep to the Great Salt Lake. I don't know what brought them down this far south. What can I tell you? Only a little. I was very young. He was... different. Prouder, yes, but... Harder, crueler, more driven. Really, I was terrified of him. We all were. When he came back, I almost didn't believe he was the same man. He was humbler. He wanted to protect, not destroy. Ask awake. Look, I'm not dead. There can't really be a place where people go into big buildings and give away all their money just to watch someone flip paper squares on a table. The Narrows up ahead, that's the Sorrows territory. They're peaceful enough, but you don't want to make them mad. You are the one Joshua Graham sent to us. Blessings of the Father in the cave on you. Daniel is waiting for you. A sorrow's Yaogwai fist is a sacred symbol. It shows that we belong to the tribe and have willingly undertaken a dangerous quest to aid the tribe. Each sorrow makes his own. And only after hunting and slaying a Yaogwai that threatened our people, our shaman, White Bird, oversees the rites. Perhaps if you spoke to him, he would allow you to undertake such a quest. Waking Cloud is my name. I am midwife to the Sorrows. It sounds ill omen, no? Midwife to Sorrows?
The children and the old have already been evacuated from the camp. They are safe enough, unless the White Legs come for us in force. I tend to other hurts and sicknesses that afflict our tribe. I also scout the valley for the herbs I use in my medicines. What would you speak of? Daniel is a wise man and a great friend to the Sorrows. He taught me to speak the language of New Canaan, the English from the Holy Books. Yes. The language of the New Canaanites is the holy tongue, for it is the language their sacred books are written in. The father in the caves brought it to them after the judgment, but the ancestors of the sorrows sinned against him. They were denied the true tongue. Six years. He attended the birth of my third child. It was a hard birth. The river nearly carried my water to the father and my child's with it. Daniel knew the ways of New Canaan's medicine. He stepped in and saved both of our lives. After the birth, I asked Daniel if he would teach me what he knew of childbirth. He agreed, and so here I am. Have you not heard of the god of the New Canaanites? He is our protector and our judge. He helped our ancestors find their place here in Zion. He gave us many gifts, but we are not to seek him out. His caves are forbidden to us. Those who seek them out are taken from us. Perhaps you do not fully understand the new Canaanites. I have seen the Father's images. His holy bride and holy son were given unto the world to save it. They dwelt in the caverns of the mountains, caverns which can still be seen today. The people sinned against him and were punished with the end that came in fire and the loss of the holy tongue. Only the new Canaanites were spared. I'm sure Daniel could tell you more. His knowledge of the Father is greater than my own. Then I will look forward to our next speaking. The dead horse has told me details about the attack on your caravan. A stranger's sympathy might not count for much, but for what it's worth, I'm sorry. The Sorrows will mourn your friends, too. They mourn everyone, even the White Legs. They have sensitive souls. Innocent, if there is such a thing. In spite of what's happened, I hope that Joshua and I can help you out of here. But to be frank, we need your help, too. Well, I'll be. I was starting to lose hope we'd be able to get any of this, much less all of it. Tribals are smart, but, well, they're ignorant. <sighs> Letting go of a taboo is difficult for them, so I knew it would have to be one of us. Turns out all it took was a gentile, or, uh, no offense. These supplies are a godsend. But if we're going to evacuate Zion without drawing more white leg attention, I need you to go back into the valley. Specifically, I need you to scout out some locations for White Legs and try to recover a map of Grand Staircase, a wilderness area to the east. There's also the matter of the roads. We're going to be heading out of the east side of the park, but I'm not sure the way is clear. I appreciate the enthusiasm. There aren't a lot of people in the wasteland with kindness to spare for anyone who isn't kin. Since you've been poking around the valley, you might see more activity from the White Legs. One of the Sorrows hunters, Waking Cloud, has volunteered to help guide you through the valley. She has a special talent for staying out of sight. After this, it's just a matter of getting everyone out of here safe and sound. And hopefully, you can head back to the Mojave without any more trouble.
Well, here we part ways. I'm needed back at the Dead Horses camp. Maybe I'll see you there sometime. Sorry. Joshua was pretty clear. Get you to Daniel, then come on home. You can take it up with him if you'd like. I will. Good gunnen, Akis. Daniel said that I was to travel with you until you have completed your scouting. Is this pleasing to you? Certainly. We should make haste then. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, Raise it, raise it even to the foundation. O daughter of Babylon, who ought to be destroyed, happy shall he be that rewardeth thee as thou hast served us. Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stones. Do you know what it means? Given those two choices, yes. In the best of all possible worlds, they would just leave us in peace. But they won't. I don't enjoy killing, but when done righteously, it's just a chore like any other. Practiced hands make for short work, and the good Lord knows there's much to be done here. Happy are those who do the work of the Lord. Zion belongs to God and the people of God. It is a natural temple and monument to his glory. When our Lord entered the temple and found it polluted by money changers and beasts, did he ask them to leave? Did he cry? Did he simply walk away? No. He drove them out. It is one thing to forgive a slap across my cheek, but an insult to the Lord requires... No. It demands correction. I and the dead horses are prepared to do what must be done to protect Zion from the White Lakes. And though Daniel won't accept it yet, there are many sorrows who are also prepared. They may not be warriors, but this is their home. If you have a chance to speak with Daniel about this, ask him to consider defending Zion instead of abandoning it. He has good intentions. But I fear that if we evacuate the sorrows from this place, it will be lost to them, and us, forever.
Guide and protect us, your humble children, as we labor in the vineyards. And make us strong to resist those who would steal Zion from us. White leg attacks grow more frequent each day. I fear for our people and for our valley if something is not done. <laughs> 